Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Whenever we have tasted something that we determine is truly good, we expect that to be repeated again. A few weeks ago, when I was getting up and about, I was disappointed when I stopped at a place that was familiar to me when I was really young. It's called Blinker's Custard down in Millville, New Jersey. It is on a corner of Route 49 and the end of what becomes Rama Road. And there's this small custard stand where you go up, and I can remember as a kid ordering a banana split. And once you had that banana split as a kid, it was good. Well, I went by the other day, ordered one, and guess what? Not even close. The banana split that I remember that made it so absolutely incredible and unforgettable was that you took two, a whole banana, you split it in a half, you put it in this oblong boat, you put three scoops of ice cream, chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, and then on that you would have a pineapple syrup, a strawberry syrup, and then chocolate. Then you would get peanuts sprinkled over top of that. All that, and then you would get whipped cream, sprinkles, and a cherry on top. And when you ate it, all those ingredients made it everything it could be. When we know something is truly good, and goodness is of God, it makes anything else that doesn't come close not really the whole deal. It is that way also for people who celebrate and receive the Eucharist. The past month we've been hearing from chapter 6 of John, better known to most scholars as the Bread of Life discourse. And in this discourse, Jesus is teaching what is necessary to gain everlasting life and receive the true goodness of God. He provides the recipe. He lets the people know what is essential. And in that which is essential, he lets them know what they can expect. He says, I am the bread of life that came down from heaven Whoever lives and believes in me and eats my body and eats my flesh and drinks my blood will have life, life eternal. But what is necessary, as he said in that same discourse, is that you understand you're being taught by God. Think back. You know, over a month ago, you had Jesus, at the beginning of chapter 6, providing the multiplication of loaves. He not only provided that, the people were so impressed and overwhelmed that everybody heard about it and they were looking for him. He was on the other side of the lake. His disciples went out fishing across the lake, and he in turn comes walking on the water. They are terrified. And he says... I am, or it is me, do not be afraid. He was letting them know that he indeed is God by the very use of the word I am. The next thing they know, they wind up on the other side of the shore and people are coming and wanting to know how Jesus arrived there. Well, Jesus is talking about him coming down from heaven and again. He tries to teach them so they can understand what truly is happening. 
that the multiplication of loaves, just like manna in, de man in the desert of old, is from God. He which all things that are good is provided. He's trying to get the people to take and understand. He tells them not just to eat. He uses a word that's rendered gnaw. Chew on this, he tells them. Almost like a philosopher says to reflect upon what is there. You have to try to gnarl into it. Like, a, like an animal grinds on something so they can get all the flavor. So that they might know truly what is being provided. That this isn't food that you eat and hunger for again. No, this food is the food that brings you everlasting life. But what is necessary is your consent, your belief, your understanding that it is God teaching you this. And it's not just the teaching regarding the Eucharist, it's the understanding that you believe in everything he taught and is handed down. We can't just pretend that some of the ingredients aren't necessary. They are. We might delude ourselves into thinking that we don't agree with this what the church says or with this what the church says, but I get to receive the Eucharist. I don't think so. Because just as with, you, if you eat the ice cream, you eat the, 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 the pineapple, the strawberries, uh, the whipped cream, the sprinkles, the nuts. If there isn't bananas, it's not a banana split. When we receive the Eucharist with our consent, with everything that Jesus taught, that is, all life is sacred from the moment of conception to natural death, we are not truly receiving the Eucharist. We can pretend. We can even acknowledge it seems good. But the reality is far different. Jesus wants our total consent. This teaching is too difficult for many. That's why many within the Catholic Church have left. That's why they've gone their separate ways, just like what happened with Jesus when he was teaching this. Many of his disciples no longer had accompanied him. They were no longer one with him. They were not of the same community. And Jesus challenges his disciples. Are you going to go as well? And they respond, you have the words of everlasting life. To whom else should we go? The disciples believed in everything that Jesus taught. Not just some things that are convenient or sounds nice or sounds good. He taught that God comes first. Not family, not job, not career, not our own personal ambition. No, we believe in this one true God and everything he teaches. And we're called to understand that this is what's going to give us Life in his company, in his presence, eternal in heaven, where joy and happiness abounds, where everything we good is not only good, it is the best it can be. And yet people delude themselves into thinking that they're still Catholic. People say to me, Father, how come it's so that somebody who is a known abortionist is able to receive communion. How come the Holy Father does not excommunicate them? In reality, the Holy Father does not excommunicate. He declares that somebody ex is excommunico. That is, they place themselves outside the teachings of the church, the teachings of Christ. It's not Jesus who did that. 
The people freely chose to go their own way. They chose to follow other gods. That's why Joshua, in our first reading, challenges the people. Are you going to serve the God or other gods? And they said, no, we will choose the one true God. Jesus, in his teachings, in regard to the Eucharist, says, no one, nothing that the Father has given me will I reject. He does not reject anyone. He doesn't reject any of the politicians today who would want you to, well, end the Hyde Amendment, something that, thank God, on the 10th of August this month was voted down. And that amendment that says that we should not have to pay for something we don't believe in. That taxes shouldn't be used from us when we don't believe that it is right. That vote passed by one in our Senate. That's how close it is between people wanting to choose what is popular or choose to follow their own false gods or their own ambitions to do what is convenient instead of doing what's difficult and true. We have to ask ourselves, do we truly receive the Eucharist for everything it is? Do we come knowing that our participation in this great sacrament is of one purpose, to bring about everlasting life for me, you, and everyone? And the good news is this, that we're called to present that and say this is how you can receive it and the best way you can receive it. I don't turn any way, anybody away from communion. I don't have that authority. I've been entrusted with providing the sacraments. I may defer them at times, but I cannot refuse. That's why a Holy Father doesn't refuse. And why are bishops in sync with them? Because it is the teaching of Christ. Those people who find it too difficult, just as the people in Jesus' day found it too difficult, will go and choose their own way. But in doing so, they place themselves outside the community. Joshua says... Who are we here to serve? Are we putting our mind, our heart, and our soul into the Eucharist? Are we truly receiving that which is absolute good and that which is absolute truth? Are we going through the motions or receiving things half-heartedly or tepidly? The question is posed, what do we truly want? The bread that came down from heaven and everlasting life? Or are we just thinking about what we want here and now? Do we want the banana split or a version that quite doesn't measure up? I, I choose the banana split.